Welcome back to the channel, everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did my most recent WandaVision piece, and I'm also going to be talking about the most recent trailer. Stick around. I'm going to start off today with a question. I'm going to ask this of you just to make sure we're on the same page. The question is, if you were like me, who, when you saw the trailer to this show for the first time, you thought to yourself, Yo, how the hell is this motherfucker back, dude? We literally watched this guy die. Die pretty fucking hard. And he doesn't die just once. He dies a He dies twice. Did you guys forget? He died horribly, tear-jerkingly, shittily once. And then Thanos resurrected him with the time stone and then ripped that damn gem out of his fucking skull. <laughs> like it was uh, like he was taking candy out of a damn Halloween bucket. Anyway, so much like Wonder Woman, who we talked about in the last video, this dude's back too. Why? W well, we didn't know for Wonder Woman why Steve Trevor's back, and we sure as f don't know why now. Although, to you comic book nerds out there, probably have a pretty, pretty good idea. Pretty good idea as to how and why this dude is back. Wait, wait, hold up just a minute. I screwed up. I forgot to give you all a spoiler alert. I'm about to completely ruin the events of the House of M. So if you want to read that, skip along. All right, bye. Enjoy. But before I get into all that, I want to bring your attention to this drawing. This is Scarlet Witch. I am going with the classic comic book version. However, I really didn't like the way this turned out. It's not that the pose is bad or her expression is bad or the drawing is bad. It's just that it's, it's boring. It's boring. There isn't really anything to it. Nothing fun. It didn't really grab me. And to me, it should grab you. So I deleted it, essentially. I just threw it out. Let that be today's lesson. Don't be afraid to just start over. And that's a hard pill to swallow, especially if you put a lot of time into something. You know, you're at hour 10 of a piece and it just isn't working. Maybe it's just a feeling you got in your gut. However, it's at this point I would suggest strongly that you have someone who has got a keen artistic eye, an editor of sorts, maybe someone else you know who draws, who can kind of objectively look at your work when you say, hey, is this messed up, dude? Can I fix this? What do you think? This will lead us to our bonus surprise second tip of the day. Don't be so stubborn that you can't accept constructive, helpful criticism from your peers. Now, I'm not saying accept every single bit of unsolicited criticism. I'm looking at you f***ing social media comments. Okay, let's jump right back into the trailer. If you were watching very closely, you may have noticed this Easter egg. I'm a nerd, so I decided to Put that into Google Translate. And when you do, you get this. Maison du mépris. Which according to Google Translate means House of Contempt. Which doesn't bode well for little Wanda and Vision. And also points to a House of M nod. Now I'm going to get into a super, super brief rapid fire breakdown of House of M faster than Cliff's notes. But first, I want to talk about what's going on in the background here. I decided to add vision to this piece, and I also wanted to evoke more emotion than just, hey, isn't Scarlet Witch cool? Which I can appreciate, man. A fair amount of my drawings are literally just a superhero striking a very cool pose and us kind of uh, looking at them in all their glory. But not this time. This time, I wanted you to think of the sadness in the relationship between Wanda and Vision both in the comic books and in the MCU. It's a fucking, it's a gut-wrenching one. So let's go back to House of M. House of M happened like a decade ago in the comic books, maybe a little bit more. Wanda essentially goes crazy. Her powers started out as the ability to change probability, which then evolved into her tapping into chaos energy or chaos magic. Or in her case, Chaos Tragic. <clears throat> I'll show myself out. No, but seriously, in the comic books, her inability to control her Chaos Magic leads to the death of the Vision, 
Hawkeye and someone else, another Avenger. Ant-Man. It was Ant-Man. So she now poses a incredible threat to the entire world because her powers now are out of control. Mostly because, you know, her powers are kind of tied to her mental state and her mental state is crazy. So they're deciding what to do. And then as they are about to, I don't know, attack her or figure out what to do with her, she kind of warps reality, turns things upside down, and she creates this false reality where only a couple of people, Wolverine being one of them, understand that they're living in a fake world. Now, eventually everybody finds out, Professor X goes to Wanda and he's like, Wanda, you crazy bitch, put the world back. And she's like, what are you talking about? Look at my beautiful babies, aren't they all cool and dope? And he's like, fucking no, you crazy bitch. This isn't right. And like that, the world starts to unravel and her babies like disappear in her arms. Yada, 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 she's still nuts. And then she makes a spell slash wish. She says, no more mutants. And then like 99.9% .9 of mutants stop existing. Ugh. Anyway, that's my two minute rundown of House of M. So I don't know exactly how House of M is going to tie into this, if at all. Maybe it was just a one off Easter egg for super fans, or maybe she might lose her mind enough to make fake children the same way she's making this fake reality. Or at least that's what it seems. Now you might be thinking, Hold on, wait a second. She doesn't have those kind of power. She could just wave her hands around and move things from here and there. Well, not just that. They gave her a real power boost in Avengers Endgame. Why? Because she was f***ing heartbroken and furious. She was blind with rage when seeing Thanos. A little refresher, on that crazy battlefield at the end of the movie, we see Thanos go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bunch of our favorite champions. However, there is only one that truly makes him freak the f*** out, and it's when he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wanda. And only Wanda, not even when Thanos is going fisticuffs with old, uh, old Mary Sue, Captain Marvel. He just punches her ass into oblivion. You know what? Let me give you a little taste in case you forgot how much he freaked the f out when they were fighting. Rain fire! But silence! Just do it. Yeah, look at that. That's not the face of a man having a particularly good time or a particularly good day. Now, what I'm getting at is Marvel has been hinting at us and kind of giving us little winks as to how Scarlet Witch Wanda has been growing in power. She's gone from just waving her hands around willy-nilly, moving things around and whatnot, just making little red sparkles, to destroying an infinity stone by herself, to then proceed to 1v1 Thanos. And she would have won too if he hadn't gone, you know, rain fire and all that. You know who else is in this? Do you remember that little girl from Captain Marvel? Well, apparently that's Monica Ram Rambo. R Rambo. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! Uh, Spectrum, I think, is her name in the comic books. A pretty cool character. Apparently she's in this too. We see her for a brief second being thrown around like a rag doll. And I'm assuming Wanda's doing that. Speaking of which, I'm very curious to find out what this whole sitcom thing is about. So, it starts off with the late 50s, early 60s era TV shows, you get your Leave it to Beaver, your I Love Lucy, your Dick Van Dyke show. Then it takes us into the 60s with this kind of bewitched looking show to the essentially their version of the Brady Bunch, which then pops us into the 80s and 90s with these two images, which showcase, I would say, Family Ties, Roseanne, Mary with Children, and of course, Full House. What does it all mean? I have absolutely no fucking idea. I do know though, that throughout the trailer, although we're shown these really, really funny sitcoms of their time, 
we don't feel at ease, right? So what all these shows have throughout the decades, throughout the half a century that they're showing us is, well, uh, family and togetherness and fun and this kind of lightheartedness. And although it's there on the surface, beneath the surface is something very, very creepy, very, very scary, actually. And at one point, Vision is even told, or whatever this version of him is told, that he's, he's dead. I have no idea. No idea what's going on. I have no idea who that woman is. I have no idea why Monica Rambeau is there. I have no idea when this necessarily takes place. Is this immediately after Endgame? Does she just lose her damn mind? I have not the foggiest. And if they were alluding to House of M, is there going to be some kind of mutant introduction here? Mm hmm. I don't know what to tell you. Your guess is as good as mine. I am, however, finished with the inks in this piece, and I'm going to start coloring it now. If you're wondering what those epileptic style flashes are doing, don't worry, I'm not trying to make you seize up. It's just me playing with the Procreate layers, but it's, you know, it's sped up in like however much the time. So that's what I'm doing. I'm constantly tinkering, um, toying with saturation levels. I'm seeing what layer style is best for this image. This is actually the first image I've ever fully colored in Procreate without any additional Photoshop or any stuff like that. Actually, one of the main reasons why I decided to color this image for the first time in Photoshop is they added a very new feature to Procreate in this most recent update, five gradient maps, dude. Gradient maps and a flatten image, AKA control shift alt E in Photoshop for any of you Photoshop nerds. Those two features are essentially two of my key features to coloring because I'm a lazy motherfucker. I don't want to color. I love black and white images. So I need a shortcut in order to do coloring from black and white, which is why I love gradient maps. And you know, they help me with the mood and tone of the piece. This is kind of a bummer. Vision is dead in the background and she's crying up over his broken thing. And just like that, we're done with the image. I hope you enjoyed the process of this and our little chat. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, leave a like and subscribe. Also, huge thank you to everyone over on Patreon. If you're really interested in more content, the uncensored version is over there. And I also stream on Twitch Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So I'll see you in the next one.